In this tutorial, we work through a couple of examples in which we use the rational root theorem, or rational zero theorem, to find all of the zeros of a polynomial. Now, the first example we're going to look at is the one we see here. We're given a polynomial function, f of x, which equals to x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we're going to work our way towards finding all of this polynomial's roots, or zeros. To do that, I follow two steps. The first step, which I'll just write step one, is to use the rational root theorem to list all of the potential roots, or zeros, of this polynomial. Remember, the rational root theorem tells us that any rational root must be of the form p over q, in other words, a rational number, such that p is a factor of the constant term, which is six here, and q is a factor of the leading coefficient, which in this case is 1. So I'll just write factor of 6 over factor of 1. Now, the factors of 6, well, those are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. The factors of 1, on the other hand, well, that's just plus or minus 1. Using the fact that any rational root has to be of the form that I'm currently boxing in green, we can come up with a list of possible or potential roots for this polynomial by looking into the ratio of each of the factors of 6 that we have here with the various factors of 1 that we have here. And since we're already considering the plus or minus of each of the factors of 6, we only need to consider positive 1 as a factor of 1. In other words, the possible rational roots would be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6. And that's our first step done. We now have a list of eight potential rational roots or rational zeros for this polynomial function. We move on to step 2. And in step 2, we use trial and error for each of these possible roots, checking whether or not when we plug them inside f of x, it's indeed equal to 0. If it is, then we found a root or a zero of this polynomial. So let's go ahead. Let's start with negative one. So I'll evaluate this polynomial when x equals to negative one, and to do that, I'm going to use Horner's method, also known as the nested scheme. So I draw a table, like so, and I now write all of the coefficients of the polynomial function that we have. So those would be one, negative two, negative five, and six. So that would look like this, that's one, negative 2, negative 5, and 6. As I just said, we're going to start by evaluating this polynomial when x equals to negative 1. So I write negative 1 on the left-hand side of the table, and now I can get started. So I carry down this 1, like so, and negative 1 times 1 equals to negative 1. I add this negative 1 to the negative 2 that's directly above it, so that's negative 2 plus negative 1, which leads to negative 3. And I repeat the process. I multiply negative 1 with negative 3, which equals to 3. And I add this 3 to the negative 5 directly above it. So that's negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 2. I now multiply negative 2 by negative 1, which is 2, which I write below the 6. And finally, 6 plus 2, which equals to 8. And since 8 isn't equal to 0, the factor theorem allows us to state that negative 1 is not a 0 of this polynomial. So we move on, and we try a different rational number inside this list. And I'll just go ahead and try positive 1. And once more, I do that using Horner's method. So I draw my table again, like so, and I copy the coefficients. Those were 1, negative 2, negative 5, and 6. And this time I evaluate the polynomial when x equals to 1. So I write that at the top there. Again, I start by carrying down this 1, like so. And now, 1 times 1 equals to 1, so I write that here. And I now add this 1 to the negative 2 above it. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. I carry on. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And I now add this negative 1 to the negative 5 above it. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. I carry on this way. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. And I now add this negative 6 to the 6 that's directly above it. And we can see that 6 plus negative 6 is equal to 0. The fact that this is equal to 0 tells us that f of 1 is equal to 0. 
In turn, the factor theorem allows us to state that x equals to 1 is one of the zeros of this polynomial. Another way of saying that is that x equals to 1 is one of the roots. The factor theorem also allows us to state that x minus 1 is a factor of this polynomial function. In other words, we can now write that x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 is equal to x minus 1, that's the zero we just found, times some other polynomial. And we know from synthetic division that that other polynomial is the quotient function, and its coefficients are right here. Those are 1, negative 1, and negative 6, which will be a quadratic. In other words, the quotient function is x squared minus x minus 6. So all we're left to do now is solve this quadratic equation. And we're quite comfortable with that, so let's go ahead. We need to solve x squared minus x minus 6. Well, we could either do this using the quadratic formula or by factoring. Factoring this quadratic, we find that this equals to x minus 3 times x plus 2. And so combining this x minus 3 times x plus 2 with the result we have written here, we can rewrite our polynomial that was x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6 as x minus 1 times x minus 3 times x plus 2. And this is known as root factoring the polynomial. And it allows us to quickly see all of the roots or all of the zeros of this polynomial. Indeed, this first factor, x minus 1, shows us that 1 is one of the roots of this polynomial, since if x equals to 1, this equals to 0, and the entire polynomial equals to 0. So I'll just go ahead and write x equals to 1. Similarly, this second factor, x minus 3, this shows us that x equals to 3 is one of the roots. Indeed, if x equals to 3, then this factor equals to 0, and the entire polynomial equals to 0. Finally, this factor x plus 2 shows us that x equals to negative 2 is one of the roots of this polynomial, since if x equals to negative 2, this factor equals to 0 and the entire polynomial equals to 0. So we can now state all of the zeros of this polynomial. Those are negative 2, 1, and 3. And that's the final answer. We've just found all of the zeros of this polynomial thanks to the rational root theorem. Let's look at another example. 